Hi everyone, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Today is Techniques on Tuesday and I'm going to be sharing two completed cards using an old school classic and that is the spotlight technique. Took it one step further and did the reverse spotlight as well and it is a super fun and easy card to make. I'm going to show you both of those completed cards, the supplies that I used, and a couple tips on how to make it go even faster if you want to do bulk style or conveyor belt style card making get a bunch done at the same time. It is so fun. I love this technique and it's fun to revisit some of the older ones that we've forgotten about. And for those of you who have been doing Fun Card Friday and Color With Us You Rock Art, thank you so much. I will be back this week. Let's jump right in. If you follow me on Instagram, I will link to that in my description box below. You have already seen these beauties and here they are. This is the Spotlight card and over here we have the reverse spotlight card and this one here just as it sounds you are highlighting one specific area or a section of the stamped image and it is such a beautiful contrast of the black and the white and then of course you know me by now I love my vibrant bright in your face colors <laughs> which gives it a gorgeous contrast and because you're only highlighting a specific part of the colored stamped image you have a leftover negative piece and I thought it would be super fun to use that one as well. Put some happy birthday sentiments in here and I have two quick and easy ready to go birthday cards to add to my stash. So let me tell you, I used my Simon Says Stamp Sketched Flowers and you can see she is a well-loved baby. This is one of my favorite stamp sets of theirs. So I did use this one. You can easily use these stamp sets as well and the stamped sentiments, put them right down there on the card and that will be just beautiful. I decided I wanted a little extra drama, a little extra character with the uh, highlighted black and white. So I went ahead and used Concord and Ninth, and this is from the Eclectic Garden stamp set. And I love this one. This was a treasure sent from Jennifer McGuire. Yes, I am the proud owner of a Jennifer McGuire card and a few of the gifties that she sent me. So thank you so much. I know she'll never see this, but I absolutely treasure that card, my friends. So here are the two cards. Let me show you what you will need. You can color these with anything that you have on hand. If you have colored pencils or Crayola markers, um, I did use Copic markers for these, but again, use what you have on hand. That's the beauty of card making is trying to use our supplies. So I'm going to leave these here. You are going to need three of the exact identical stamped images. And I always stamp out a fourth one and I'll tell you why. So you can see here, this is the Simon Says Stamp. This is the Altenew, I believe it is, from a card kit that I got. This one is the Craft Your Life Project Kit. That's what this was from. It was a beautiful stamp set. And again, it is a corner one that I just stamped up here. So I'm gonna show you really quickly um, that in this one here, I did use a Lawn Fawn stitched round circle die. And the reason why I used this one is so that I want it to mimic the stitching on the border here. So it would kind of be like little, you know, matchy matchy. You can use, again, whatever you have. I have some Spellbinder ones. But for this one, I'm going to show you the Hero Arts Infinity dies. Again, I'm going to put this one to the side for now because you're only going to need three to complete these two cards. You just find whatever surface size circle that you would like. Two of these you're not going to touch. Two of these are going to be your base. So this one here, let me zoom out just a little bit. This one here and this one here are going to be the bottom base. So this will be this part. And then this little piece tucking under here is this one here. This is gonna be the one that you're going to color and die cut. And that's the reason why I was saying I like to cut color two of these at the same time is in case I mess up, in case I make a mistake, <laughs> or if I'm doing some die cutting and I realize that's not where I want it, I can easily have my second one already ready to go. As soon as you know you're coloring, you're in your zone, you're doing your thing, it's easier to do the second one at the same time. If you stop, put everything away, 
and then have to color a second one. For me personally, it's a little more difficult. So I do two at the same time. To complete these cards, you only need three panels. I use four. So if you wanna go ahead and stamp out four, probably doing yourself a little favor. <laughs> so we're gonna put this one over here for now. These two are the base, and this one is gonna be the one that we're going to color. Once it is completely colored and you're happy with the way that it looks, go ahead and line up your little circle dies wherever you would like for them to be on here. Let me actually use the larger one up here and then use a smaller one on this little beautiful flower. What I also like to do is try to position these in a way, like I could easily do this or I could do that or only highlight this one here, but then I probably wouldn't be able to use the bottom panel to complete a second card. So I try to visualize not only where I would like to highlight, but also where I would like the negative or the reverse spotlight to be as well. So that's just something to keep in mind. Technically or typically, I should say, this is only done with one. You're spotlighting one area of the card. So I'm gonna put this away for now. So you're gonna just, just like that, have this colored image. You're gonna pick the spot that you want to have this die cut. You're gonna put your little die just like this. And I probably won't die cut this right now because I have a sleeping kitty cat right next to me. And you're gonna go just like this. Once it is die cut out and you pop this part out, come back to your blank uncolored background and pop it up in exactly the same spot. That's why you have to stamp these out in the perfect situating little spot here, which is why it's great to have a misty. You do not have to move anything around. You leave it right where it's at. <clears throat> Excuse me. So once you have that die cut out, popped it up, go back to your original base and find the spot where it was and add it right to the top, just like that. Pop it up so that there is a continuation of the exact same stamp. Just takes a little bit of wiggle room sometimes, lining it up exactly just so. Once you put that foam underneath, you can see here I have some 3D foam. It does just ever so slightly move your image just a tiny bit, but that's okay. I don't think any, anybody's gonna look at it and say, you know, it's not perfectly lined up, but if you love it absolutely perfectly lined up, skip the foam, this is tip number one, and just use your adhesive. You don't need to pop it up. Just use adhesive and make it flat. That works just the same. But for this one here, you will need to pop it up to give it that little extra wow factor, or you can do the adhesive as well. You can just make it flat. You do not need to pop your cards up. I'm a dimension girl. I love my cards to be popped up. Gives it that little extra drama. So again, your third panel, you've got one as the base here, one as the base here. You've already moved your popped up image, which is this one here to this card. Now you have this one here with a big gaping hole in it, just like a porthole when you're looking out of a cruise ship, you're gonna look to the beautiful image. Just go ahead and put that down on your um, base here. So you're gonna have a colored image with the hole missing and you're gonna just add that right to that one. It is so easy. These took me less than 10 minutes. And then in the end, you have two beautiful, unique and super fun cards. Love using this technique. I did use an embossing. I used my rabbit hole designs. I love this one. It is built in. All you gotta do is take the lid off and your embossing static powder and your brush are already all in one. It doesn't get any easier than that. I use Tailored Expressions white embossing powder and of course your Versamark and then any heat tool that you have on hand to create these two sentiments. Here is another tip that you can use. You don't have to use embossing if this is not your jam or maybe you don't want to, you know, do the hassle of using the embossing powder, static powder, Versamark, heat tools. Or maybe you don't have it. That is okay. You can hand draw it out. You can stamp it using the original one. You can use a different one and stamp that one out as well or you can use what I have here on hand is the Tim Holtz Ideology Small Talk 
and these are those little stickers you can see here it is well loved these are great to just grab and go i put one on the original card i think this was on my instagram a couple of weeks ago maybe a month or so ago and i actually was supposed to send this as a sympathy card and when i looked at it i said no this is too bright it's too cheerful way too like <laughs> it just doesn't really fit the vibe that i was looking for so i did create a second one and i sent that one in its place so i'm going to use this one as just you know send it to a card as a pick me up a cheerful card so that is another way that you can use this if you don't want to do the heat embossing you can stamp it out you can use some stickers um, there's you know, a couple different ways that you can use it. So just a quick recap, you are doing a spotlight card. You're using the negative image to do a reverse spotlight. And you are using three panels that are exactly the same. Lots of color, anything you want to use to color these and any stamp set that you want. And you're going to have two cards in the end. It is a very easy technique. If you want to stamp out five, six, seven, 10, 20 of these and do conveyor belt style card making, it is one of the easiest that you can do. So that is going to be it for this little card sesh, my friends. And I am so happy to have a life returning to normal again. And well, my new normal, I should say. <laughs> I'm learning to live in this moment and make it work. So I will be back and happy to share so many wonderful things with you in the card making paper craft stamping community and this beautiful creative world that we have. And that is going to be it for this one, my friends. I will link all the supplies that I used in my description box below, a link to my Instagram, and I will see you very soon on my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.